they just raced more than 1,000 meters. And that's essentially right where they started. So these, I mean, the Germans and the Italians still went out all crazy for more than 1,000 meters. And it's still pretty much the same position as they had at the start. The way they understand how to be patient on the legs and now use the upper body, yeah, this is, this is outstanding. Hello and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining in. Today's video is all about the women's quad at the under 23s this year, 2021. And I've looked at a lot of races and the quads this year on the men's and on the women's side were awesome. I've already done a video on the men's quad. Drive mass, drive mass, jump. Control the upper body. Drive mass, control the upper body. And now to pull ahead of the Italians. The Italians are now ahead of the Dutch. The Dutch are ahead of the Germans. Now I wanna have a look at the women's squad because there's one team, the Swiss girls, is stained out. Their technique is fabulous. They're right there where my cursor is. They start out super composed, uh, super well together. And this is something we all can learn from them. Get into your game quickly, right from the start. That's lesson number one. Don't mess around trying to do everything just to stay with the pack. If you have a race plan, if you have a technique plan, follow it through from A to Z. There is no option B. It's not like the first 500, we do this and then, no. Get into your rhythm, get into your game, follow your technique principles, which you have established in all the training sessions and just follow through on them right from the start. And they are not in the lead. Right now it's the Germans, the Italians, all very, very experienced crews here. Not by age, but just the nations. You know, these nations have put out um, awesome women, women's quads uh, on a consistent basis. So if you get into a women's quad there, you are fast. And guys, if you watch this and you think, ah, it's just women's rowing. No, this is so high quality. Um, I think 90% of all male rowers in the world would have a tough time to compete with these ladies. There's one thing, you see it looks so relaxed. It looks awfully relaxed. It looks like a stroke rate 25, when in fact it's way above 30. Why? Because the ratio of drive time to recovery time is about as it is with 25. By other, in other words, the way they accelerate the boat throughout the drive gives them a lot of time to recover, actually recover during their recovery. And this is why it looks so composed and relaxed. Another reason why it looks so composed and relaxed is the finish. Now, they end the stroke at a definite point of motion and time. So the timing is awesome, but it's not like, hey, you need good timing. Good timing needs to be established with synchronized body motions with the effect they have on the boat. So before you think about timing, you need to think about synchronizing the effect you have on the boat. And if you look at the Swiss girls, this is precisely what they do. They leave her pretty late. Their upper body leverage happens pretty late, not throughout the entire boat, but throughout most of the boat. They do use a bit of upper body lean back, not a lot, but just enough to get that boat going. The thing is, if you don't use any upper body motion at the finish in a quad, this can be fast. But if you know how to use it, not too much, but just the right amount, this is gonna be faster than a team boat that does not use upper body leverage at all, or that uses it too early. Look at the German girls, for example. I think they row beautiful as well. In my opinion, they are super well together, has a long leg drive and a very nice pivot. Why they didn't win? Maybe a race strategy. Maybe, like in the men's aid that I analyzed, maybe there are more differences in the force curves, the way they structure the stroke. That's possible. Maybe it is simply a physiological difference. Of both crews, we can learn that consistency in, in the way they have a race plan, get into technique and follow through. It's not about, I wanna beat the leader 500 and do everything I can. No, it's about getting into your game getting the timing right and following the technique principles. This is like three minutes into the race. If you're still not in the lead then, there are two options. Either you run crazy and your nerves go wild and say, oh, I just wanna win this and there's a chance to win this and, or you stick to your game. And these ladies are so disciplined, there's a good deal we can learn from them. 1,000 meters, and it's so close between these three nations, Italy, Germany, and Switzerland. This is awesome. And also Czech Republic is well in the game. It's uh, 10 meters behind. That's less than a boat length. 
this is still very, very close. And now the Swiss starts to edge ahead. And the question is why? I looked at the video twice and I tried to figure out, is there a difference that I can see? Let's have a look, watch the Swiss. Catch, pretty fast connection. I think the blades set a little too deep, but that's, that's the case with almost every single boat. If you don't have Randall Foyers and it's the A finals, that's always the case. But the way, look at this. Leg drive, just look at when the upper body engages. Now, and to me, it looks like their coach emphasized that. Leg drive, patience, now the engagement point of the upper body. One more stroke, leg drive, now it's connection. It takes a long time to connect, but that's across all the boats, you see? Just watch, watch number two girl. Now she's got the force in her blades. It takes a while because there's also a lot of rotation until the blade is in the water. But a final technique is always different, and this is not this is not um, picture boat. This is about being faster. So would it be faster if the blades were in the water, just shallow below the surface? In my humble opinion, yes. The way they understand how to be patient on the legs and now use the upper body, yeah, this is this is outstanding. This is truly outstanding. <laughs> The thing is, you 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 got to stay true to your virtues even if you're under pressure. Because you got to consider that mental situation. You're ahead, maybe a third to half of a boat length. And then you got Germany and Italy. I mean, they just raced more than 1,000 meters and that's essentially right where they started. <laughs> These, I mean, the Germans and the Italians, they went out all crazy for more than 1,000 meters. And it's still, pretty much the same position as they had at the start. And this tells you a lot about how close rowing is. I mean, I, I, I don't know why, why there are not like hordes of people, not just these coaches going crazy on the shore. I don't know why there are not so much more people watching this. This is one of the, rowing is one of the sports with the tightest, tightest, tightest margins. We're not talking about percentages anymore. We're talking about, uh, you know, um, in, in German, it's called promille, so per 1,000. This is, this is how you need to calculate this. So if anything gives you like 1% advantage, this is crazy. This is like two, three seconds. These are the worlds we're thinking about here. And now in that situation, let's go forward a bit. The Swiss managed to pull ahead ever so slightly. And I wanted to, actually I wanted to answer the question why. Let's go back a couple of strokes. Because we had a very good shot of the Germans and Italians. Okay. Oh, that's a shaky bit, shaky, 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 now they are. Okay, are the Germans doing anything obviously wrong? Um, yeah, the lady here in both seat, she has her arms massively bent. But this can, in a quad, as long as the force is distributed in a very synchronized way, I think that would work as well. But also the Italian girl, her shoulder. That's why it's so interesting to have a 2K race because 2K, you know, 500 meter, a lot of things work. 10 kilometers, a lot of things work. It's mostly about endurance, but 2K is right the sweet spot. The older I get, the more I start to understand why FISA came up with two and a half and then 2K because 2K is the distance that neither favors endurance nor sprint athletes. So it's, it's right, it, it truly is a sweet spot. And this is where technique, strength, and endurance pays. This is what makes rowing so special, in my opinion. What I wanted to point out, there you see this bend right there. So the Italian girl is not in a very good position. This is like one still frame of a 2K race. And I'm pretty sure you could, anybody in the world, during a 2K, you would find one bad shot of everybody no matter how brilliant they are. But there are certain things, and this is why I point, point this out, I think these are motion patterns, and motion patterns are decisive when it comes to a 2K race. Another motion pattern here of the German girl, pretty heavily bent arms. That is a motion pattern. And if, if your motion pattern is that your hip is not engaged with the rest of the trunk, but is like a vent right there, you will not be able to transfer as much force as you could, which means you use half the trunk to lever. In my experience, this is not as effective as it could be. Is that the reason why they got a second and third? I don't know, it could be. Probably, if you had a physiological superior team, everybody could roll this way and it would still win. But the, the question is, is it possible at that level to be physiologically speaking superior? Because they all do what they can. <music> But the way, just, I'm, I'm looking at the Italians right now. The way they roll, yeah, there's a bit, there's a bit of upper body motion going on before they connect. 
but this is complaining on a super high level going back a couple of frames do we see anything truly outstandingly bad with the germans no they row extremely smooth and well you ladies rock and this is really cool maybe german stroke girl a bit of upper body early upper body i think what we can point out i believe that i can point it out is that the germans do seem to use Averaged out through the entire crew, the upper body slightly earlier. I see more differences in, in the upper body motion in the Italian boat. So to me, the Swiss boat is the most cohesive when it comes to technique and how to influence, um, how to influence the boat. I've said this in a couple other videos. The most important thing is to understand that you essentially have three levers available. So lever number one are the legs, most powerful, but so easy to overpower the rest of the body. Let me pause because this is awesome. And the second lever are, is the trunk. And the trunk is um, either not used enough or used too much or used at wrong points of time. This is what can go wrong. The right point of time would be, this is what I want to point out right now. Let's go back a couple of frames. Watch the shoulders. And you got to keep in mind, these girls are in lactate nirvana. Um, they are super exhausted, maybe even in the tunnel, so we see black and nothing else. Probably the last thing to worry about right now, our second last thing is technique. And we are analyzing their technique right now. You always have to get the perspective. This is not like, oh yeah, they're working great technique and, and, and now arm is going to... They don't care about arm right now, they care about winning. Watch the shoulders. How little, how little shoulder and hand motion there is going on under the given circumstances when they get the blade into the water and start to drive. You just don't see a lot of difference between recovery and drive. Could it be better if you had like 10 strokes to perform only technique? Anytime. It's not about technique only, it's about applying technique when you can't, when you think you can't row anymore. But these ladies are psyched up right now. They're so thrilled, you can see this. The leg drive, look, look at number three girl here, leg drive. Mass, oh, sorry, but this is awesome. I don't want to be like over flattering and say, ah, this is so good, <laughs> but it is good. It, it, I, I enjoy this. And the reason why I make these videos is first of all, show you, look, this, this is, these are the things that, that make pros look like pros. There's very little body motion used at the right point of time. They use the upper body pretty late they, use, they don't use a lot, but they use it punctuated all together simultaneously at the right point of time, not too early. And they have a race strategy. They got into the game very early and just stuck with it. You got to keep in mind the Swiss girls pull ahead while the Italians and the Germans are banging it out for bronze or silver. Nobody wants to have the bronze and nobody wants to be fourth, but fourth place is pretty much you know, too far away. They managed to pull ahead of the Germans and Italians who are trying to battling it out to battle it out for for second and third. This is something I admire endlessly. Yeah, last couple of strokes for the Swiss girls, a couple more. And interestingly, now through the finish line, they don't stop. They continue to row a couple of strokes as if nothing happened. They could have done another 300 meters. This is this, this is why I don't understand why people finish line just act like dropping dead. And I got, a, I got feedback from a couple of doctors actually after my last video um, talking about you know why you shouldn't lay down in a boat. And they said, hey, I'm a doctor, you're right. Uh, you should never do this. Congratulations to the Swiss girls. What a fantastic race. Thank you very, very much, all delighted. And I'm delighted to be able to show you this. If you have no clue about rowing, you think, oh, it's super easy and maybe they, they act as they were, as if they were exhausted. No, it's that thrill to be in the game. You know, the last, it's, if you've ever done a quad, a quad has a sound that is awesome. It is such a force because it's a pretty compact boat compared to the eight, but it's not much slower than an eight. And the speed and thrill and sound and that feeling of unity in a quad is almost impossible to match because the control you have with skulls over the boat is a much bigger much much more yeah much greater one than with sweep oars so this is why the quad has its own thrill versus the eight the eight is super unique and, and awesome but the quad you ha you gotta race the quad to understand that and a quad that is performing well feels like flying it, it, it's, it it's truly awesome and I've raced the quad myself and if I, if I see races like this, 
Um, yeah, my heart jumps of joy. Alrighty, that, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to your comments. What do you think of this race? Maybe you've got some background information you can share. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to see more videos like these. Share, subscribe, please. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.